Jesus told the Jews, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. In the book of Luke, chapter 24 and verse 44, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, fulfilling the prophet Isaiah, chapter 2 and verse 2, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. Greetings again in the sweet name of Jesus. We want to welcome you now back to our program today. Glad once again the Lord's blessed us to be with you and send a program out now to the sick and shut in especially. And you that are in your homes and you're watching us by TV or listening to us on radio, we appreciate you. And thank God for all of our listeners. And just want to make this announcement now to the people that's listening in, maybe traveling through the land and watching our program. We thank God for you. And we're on different stations now by TV. We're in... Kentucky on WLEX, Lexington, Kentucky. And we're also in Dallas, Texas, and San Antonio. But now I don't know the times and stations. You'll just have to find it out. But we appreciate God for allowing us to put our programs on. And also on radio on WLAC Nashville. And that reaches the whole coast, just about southern coast. And, and we're glad of God's word. And, and, and if you're in any of the areas where you can reach us, we appreciate it on WLAC radio. That's 12 or 1510 on your radio dial on the AM. And we're on at 815 PM. And that's 12, uh, 1510 on your dial. If you're anywhere between Tennessee and going to Florida anywhere, you can pick Nashville up and it's at 8.15, and we thank God for it. And today I'm going to be finishing up our message on Babylon and upon on the sin of Achan and how dangerous it is for us to take anything outside of God's Word, and it's also just as dangerous for a person to add to God's Word or take anything out. People don't really realize how dangerous it is to touch God's Word. There have been many a men that's tried to twist it and pervert it and change it. And Paul warned us, if an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we preached unto you, let him be accursed, you see. So it's accursed anything that, that's outside of God's Word that tries to pervert it. But today I'm speaking out of the book of Revelation 17 about the great whore as we find there where the Bible said that verse 3, John said, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and said, I saw a woman, now notice this, sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven head and ten horns. Now, that woman loves to ride and commit fornication with the big leaders, the big kings. She don't want much to do with poor people. They'd rather preach prosperity and, and preach money and wealth and power instead of preaching the Word of God. But now the real bride is going to have to learn to suffer a little, learn to be able to stand in the air we're living. And John began to see this woman and said, Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now listen to John. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou marvel? 
I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. And then he told him the beast. The beast that thou sowest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Now listen to me. A lot of people, they teach you that the beast and the mark of the beast and the image and so forth has never existed other than our future. But now folks, that's not true. The beast has always been. Anytime the devil's building up empires, that is represented as the beast. And the Bible called it the beast that was, that means back in the old days, and is not, and yet will ascend out of the bottomless pit. So the beast right now is still under the seal that Jesus set up on him when he bound him. And they're preaching all that future, but it's not true. But now Jesus already put the wound on that dragon, and right now he's still under that seal, but God's got to loosen him and allow him to go out again to deceive the nations. And it's a working up now, and they're going to be a world ruling power again. But nevertheless, John's going to tell us the mystery. He said, The mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has seven heads. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit at your earth and go into perdition. That's exactly what they're doing today, building up all this material. And the Bible said they're going into perdition. And they that dwell upon the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Now, what does he really mean by perdition? Do you remember in the book of 2 Peter, the third chapter, when Peter was talking about the earth going to be burned up? He said, God had reserved the earth unto far and un unto the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, when they're talking about all this building up of war material and building up of our nuclear powers, and right now the nations is pushing Iraq out and trying to stop them from building to be a super nation, but yet they've got certain ones that they will allow. But now, you know, all of that is a building up for the son of perdition, and they're going into that force now. But we need to be really prayed up in this day and hour and to the church you need to recognize it. Jesus did not tell you anywhere that the church would be raptured before the man of sin. They're preaching you these things but it's not true. The man of sin will be here and so will the church. But whoever's name's in God's good book of life will be able to stand. But listen what he said. The beast that thou sawest was and is not shall ascend out the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell upon the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, see, and yet is. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The woman is the whore. And she's sitting on these government powers today. And believe me or not, She's a ruling today through the kings of the earth. And they're committing fornication with her too. And the Bible said there are seven kings. Notice this. Five are fallen. Of course, that's Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and the Roman Empire and the Judean. All of that power was brought down. And the Bible said one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, and is not even he is the eighth, listen to it, and is of the seven and shall go into perdition. See, and that's what they're doing now, building up for that. And the ten horns which are seven kings, or ten kings rather, ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So as long as they're subjecting to the beast, they allow them to be as kings. These have one mind and give the power and strength unto the beast until the word of God's fulfilled, see? And they'll make war with the lamb and the lamb will overcome them because he's the Lord of lords. And then he told us about the waters which you saw where the horse sits are people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And then the ten horns which you saw upon the beast they're going to hate the whore. So eventually that old woman is going to get in trouble. And that's exactly what happened in the day of Joshua. Whenever old Achan went in and stole that Babylonian garment, come on, and hid it right among the 
people of Israel, which at that time was God's people, and he started hiding it right among them, then that angered God, and God stopped blessing them and told Joshua he has to get that out of there, see? And then they took it out and burned it with fire. You read it. And then they stoned all of the families of Achan that had done that. You see how dangerous it is? And I'm going to show you God's going to do the same to old Babylon today. You read in her future. The Bible said, The ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Does it say that? See? For God has put in their hearts to fulfill His will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God be fulfilled. And then He said, The woman which thou sawest is who? That great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. You see there? And then you find more about her, Babylon, in Revelation 18 tells you exactly what's inside of that woman. Even though she's decorated on the outside, but what's in her? Listen to John in Revelation chapter 18 verse 1. After these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great. Babylon the great is fallen. Now, do you know what that really means? God showed me this. When he said he's fallen, I used to think that means that somebody tore her down. But it just simply meant she fell from an exalted to a habitation of every kind of spirit in the world and a hold of every devil. And I'm going to prove it to you. The Bible said Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of what? Devils. And the hold of every foul spirit, about every kind of spirit there is, is going into Babylon. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Don't you know one of the greatest nations today, the U.S., we're the one that's got the freedom that will allow about every religion in it. It's a truth. And don't you know, and I thank God for our freedom, but don't you know that our freedom is allowing the good as well as the bad in here? where these other nations don't allow nothing. But now God's got to allow His Word to come to pass. And that old Babylon is right here in America. Listen to me. Now, as far as America itself, no, I do not believe it's Babylon. As far as the nation. If it were, then Christians would have to get out. But what is it? Spiritually, it is Babylon the Great because the great whore of Revelation is working right in her. And it's also committing fornication with the kings of the earth. And brother, anything outside of the true word of God, she'll get it over to it. And our freedom today is a helping her, but it's also working for God too. So it's a great mystery to understand it. But now, I don't know another nation that has as much freedom of religion as we do in America. And it is a good thing. It blesses God's people. But now don't think you ain't allowing the devil to do his part too. And we're facing this day and are we going to have to recognize the difference between the spirits of Babylon and the spirit of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said here, listen now. Babylon is fallen, become a habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage. That means they're crammed right in there. A cage of every unclean and hateful bird for all nations. Now notice this. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And wine represents spirit. And every nation just about at one time or another has been drunk with that old wine that that woman gives out to people. And brother, listen to me. The only ones that can stand against her and prosper and make it with God is God's children. And the Bible said here, listen now. For all nations drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. Now he didn't say, Stay in her. Come on, people. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Does it sound like God is compromising? He never told you to stay in Babel. He said, come out of that old woman. And we're going to have to do what he said. Why? For her sins 
have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. And he said, Reward her even as she rewarded you, double unto her double according to her work. In the cup which she is filled, God said, Fill to her double. You remember, Jesus tells his people, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and what? The cup of devils. We're either going to have to make our tree good or fall right in with the rest of the world and get in that trapping cage of every unclean. And boy, it's going on today. And the Bible said how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. And God said so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen. Notice that. She was saying, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Now that whore is exalted awful big there. But don't you know there's somebody right next to her that's going to sit in a temple as God? In 2 Thessalonians, the man of sin who opposeth and exalts himself above all that's called God or that is worshipped, and he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. And brother, he's not going to get along with that whore because she's saying, I'm a queen, and he's saying he's God. Now let me tell you something. I just read you. Did not the Bible say that the ten kingdoms would give their power and strength unto the beast and they're going to hate that whore and they're going to eat her flesh and they're going to burn her with fire because God's put in their hearts to give their kingdom and strength to the beast? So you see, this man of sin, I believe it without a doubt, is going to turn against old Babylon. And brother, he's wanting to be God himself. And whoever don't worship him, see is going to have to receive a mark in their foreheads or in their right hands. And brother, you don't want in on that. But now don't let nobody tell you the church is going to be raptured before all that man of sin takes place. It will not. Paul said, let no man deceive you in 2 Thessalonians. For the day of Christ will not come except there's a falling away first and the man of sin is revealed. But I'll tell you one thing I'm proud of. Even though... The little church of Jesus Christ is right here on earth among Babylon. Babylon can't touch the real people if they want to stay true to God. You hear what I'm saying? Sure, we're right among Babylon. I can get in my car and drive down to about every street in town or anywhere about it. Right on the corner, you'll find Babylon's daughters sitting up. You know what I'm saying? And they've got their little churches established and want to say, I'm of this, I'm that, I'm this church, I'm that church. And they've got their own groups. But now Jesus don't have but one church. And he builds it up on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And Jesus is the chief of it. The Pope's not the chief. Jesus is the head of the body, the church. And he don't have nobody that he calls Holy Father because he's the Holy Father. And we can't call them rabbis because he's the rabbi. Jesus is our only master today. And we're going to have to understand these things and prepare ourselves because we're facing a trouble there. Somebody's got to hate the name of Jesus again. And, and I believe John was right when he saw under the altars the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And what were they doing? They were crying, How long, O Lord, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Did not God give them white robes and tell them to rest a little season till their fellow servants and brethren be killed as they were should be fulfilled? Did God tell them there in Revelation, I believe 5, somewhere through there, to rest a little season? Why? Because he's going to turn that beast loose for a little season, see, to complete its work. Satan's still got a short work, and there's about three and a half more years of real tribulation. Of course, you're going to have a lot of trouble in the meanwhile, but when the beast takes his final seat in authority, then he's going to have his kingdoms, and they're hating that whore. See, and they're all going to yield to him. But listen to what happened here now. Read it. She said, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and will see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. What is it? Death. Here it is. Mourning. Famine. And she shall utterly be burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. Is that what he said here in the book of Revelation chapter 17 and verse 17? Look what God said about the ten kingdoms. For God has put in their hearts the ten horns 
to fulfill His will and to agree and give their strength and kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. See? And these ten kingdoms is going to hate that whore and burn her and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Is that what God said here in the 18th chapter? He said that her plagues is coming one day, morning, famine, and she'll utterly be burned with fire. Thank God for strong is the Lord God that judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her, lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, saying, Alas, listen, for that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgments come. Did it say here, listen to this, let me show you again. The Bible said here that the, the ten kingdoms, let me just find it here and show you what he said here about it because we need to know these things. Listen to what it said here. Uh, let me just find it here. All right, read it all when you get time. Uh, verse 16 of Revelation 17. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall what? Hate the whore, and shall make her desolate, naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Is that what he said here in the 18th chapter? That the kings of earth were going to bewail her because they see her burning with fire? Now these ten kingdoms today that's raising up, and all of them, working through, I guess, the UN and Europe and so forth, it's going to come to its head eventually. They're all going to give their power to the beast, and then they're going to hate the whore and make her desolate. And people, we're facing a troubled hour upon us. And I'm not saying these things to try to scare you, but I can't see the earth getting better. But now God's people can get better. We're in a troubled hour, but we can stand. And that's why Paul tells you, get that armor up on you. But listen what happened here now. And the Bible said, The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. Listen to that. The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, and all fine and wood, all manner of vessels of ivory, all manner of vessels of precious wood, brass, iron, marble, about every kind of substance there is, she's got it. Seminin, odors, ointments, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horses, chariots, slaves, and souls of men, even souls of men that she had bought. The fruits of that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. You see how God's turned against that old woman and the uh, kings is going to hate her. And the Bible said, And thou shalt find them no more at all. In other words, this woman, and I'm honest to God with you, I wonder about America a lot. If we're not going to help fulfill this, whenever people quit buying and selling, we're in trouble. And don't think that Europe ain't raising up now and working out to have their own market to where they can sell and they can buy. And if I'm not mistaken, they're already saying they, that whoever comes under them can buy of them. But if they don't come under Europe, they can't buy. And the UN has already got their authority that they can even sanction these little countries that they can't buy or sell. So don't tell me we're not in that power now working the beast. Honey, people deceive so bad it's pitiful. And I'm honest to God with you, I can even see the seven plagues are working. You read your Bible in the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation. One of them plagues was to loose the four angels that was bound in the great river Euphrates. And then right there was preparing the kings for the battle of God. And three unclean spirits went out. Now, all the trouble up on us today is a part of these plagues. And the church has not went out yet. And I reckon August of 1992, they've already said that a lot of them running around predicting that the church is raptured this month of August in 92. And we're almost right now ready to go into September. And the church hasn't got raptured yet, and it will not be raptured. I'm going to tell you, Jesus said it through Paul, and he's right. Read it tonight when you get time, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Because the church cannot leave here until the man of sin is revealed, 
the son of perdition. So these preachers running around here spalling that the church is going to be raptured and they're using their computers and sending out pamphlets and telling you to be raptured in 1992 and, and some 88 reasons why the church is gone. Honey, you need to get out of that deceiving. Nobody don't know that day or hour. Jesus has control of the times. He knows. But brother, I've never seen a time that the United States, and it's the truth, and a lot of our allied nations is getting in a state of debt that their economies are falling and, and, and God is allowing hurricanes and God's allowing wars and God is allowing earthquakes and damage is getting great up on this earth. You listen, brother, people better be a praying because Jesus is getting angry and the wrath of God is to be poured out in this end time without mixture. Brother, listen to me. He's going to let His wrath fall all over this earth. And the saints of God, if we're watching and praying, sure He'll keep you. But don't you let nobody tell you that you're going out of here before the man of sin. Unless you die and go on, that's the only way. Because God won't break His word for nobody. But now you read about old Babylon, people, she lost just about all of her selling and buying. And brother, I believe America's getting in that shape and some of the other nations that's claiming to be superpowers. And we're going to have to be praying in this hour because Paul said put on the whole armor of God to stand. Now this may sound like a, a, a tough message, but we don't need to hear these tickle-eared preaching stories that everything's all right and smooth-coated. Brother, we need to know the truth and then be able to stand. I don't believe nothing can prevail against God's people, but now God don't want us walking around here blinded and not knowing what's up on us. Jesus said, I'll show you things to come. And brother, I see darkness up on this earth. But I see the light of the gospel too. And Jesus is that light. And thank God, the God of the world, the devil has no power over us. But now we need to open our Bible and see what kind of shape the world's in. And then we can turn to God better. So till we see again, study these things out. And if you're lost today and you don't know the Lord, don't put him off because you don't know what hour your Lord's coming. If he don't come and get you when he comes into judgment, he could take you out of here anytime. But if you don't know him today, repent of your sins. Make your mind up you want to be saved. Now, I can't tell you join the church of your choice. You don't have no choice. Jesus is the only one that built the church. And you want the choice? Get his. He's the builder. And he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. So we can't tell you join the church of your choice. But I can tell you to repent be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for sin removing, and then he'll come in your heart. So I see you again, pray, seek the Lord, and obey him in Jesus' name. We'd like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in this outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to Church of Jesus Christ, P.O. Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. May God bless you.